Welcome everyone. Welcome to today's session, a session about virtual machines and service mesh, um, service mesh in enterprise. Uh, we will provide you much more than five things uh, you need to know, but we hope you can pick up five things that are important for your environment and uh, your implementation of service mesh and your application and uh, take them and implement um, in your architecture. My name is Peter McAllister. I work for Titrate. If you don't know, Titrate is a leader in a service mesh space. We provide a platform to run your service mesh and multi-cluster uh, enterprise environment. Uh, in this session, we will cover first how uh, VM uh, joining service mesh, what concepts we use, what architectures we see in uh, enterprise environments and how we address them. And at the end, we also want to go through the demo to see how VM is onboarded um, and how uh, application of VM works after it's onboarded. So let's spend a little bit of time just discussing uh, basic concepts before actual experience. So everyone starts with the question, why? Why would we add VM to a uh, service mesh? And hopefully, if you're in this session, you already understand benefits of service mesh. I will touch on them a little bit later. Um, but in general, mostly people who are asking this question, they already know why they need service mesh. So why you need VM in the service mesh? It's the next question. And answer to it is, mostly because you may have some traditional application in monolithic uh, form factor and you want to put it into microservices but it's work that cannot be done in one day it requires multiple uh, months or maybe even years to migrate whole applications so and microservices idea is to start small and extend so you start with few services running in Kubernetes pods and the rest of your applications served by VM. Or you may have some services that run in Kubernetes space and at the same time in VM. So for load balancing and failover and all other reasons, you may have two different form factors running the same application. For service mesh advantage, of course you can just run these two instances independently and use uh, load balancers. But question comes, what if I want to benefit for, from uh, service mesh concepts? And first of all, of course, security. So encryption of the traffic, you don't need any extra VPN solutions to uh, tunnel your traffic between ports and VMs. You also can identify requests if they're coming from a uh, valid source and respond to them only if they validated. Uh, you can also get uh, different rules around your traffic patterns. That is important. And finally, for your troubleshooting and analyze, an analysis of your performance, you also need to have one single picture of uh, application, doesn't matter if it runs in a microservices or a VM app form factor. How we look at it in terms of uh, technologies. So we're trying to look at VM as it's another port, meaning you have a VM that runs application and it runs proxy. And traffic, all traffic comes to proxy and application and proxy uh, only communicate uh, using loopback address. So application, in theory, shouldn't be exposed to the external world. Uh, it's a security requirement, and it's a NIST paper, actually written by one of my Titrate colleagues, and uh, together with other uh, members of our community that covers these concepts of uh, securing application behind proxy. And if you think of port, uh, you never reach application directly. You always go through Istio proxy if uh, application is onboarded to service mesh. At the same time, 
even if we treat it as a pod, we cannot completely treat it as a pod because technically on next level, uh, you cannot run VM inside of Kubernetes. You run it on a separate piece of infrastructure. So in play comes all things you wouldn't worry about in one uh, Kubernetes cluster, such things as a network and firewalling and routing. Additional to it, you think about uh, application um, running in the same namespace. So you cannot say, oh, my VM is completely independent. I can have it to be a member of multiple namespaces. Namespaces, it's a very interesting concept in Kubernetes, and it limits uh, and specifies rules around your workload. If you get in conflict between these workload specifications from different namespaces, it causes bigger problems that you want to avoid at all possible uh, cost. Additionally, in terms of detecting where application traffic is going, or what application traffic belongs to, it also needs to have namespace attribute or namespace label. Moving along, um, so what we're seeing in real life, it's a multiple uh, different combinations and architectures. So, okay, your VM, we discussed it already, runs in different, um, in, in different um, platform, right? So it's not part of your Kubernetes cluster. But what if it's behind firewall? What if it's behind load balancer? And you're addressing VM using IP address, but what if it's behind um, AWS? And then AWS uh, load balancers, they don't provide you endpoint IP, they just publish FQDN. So now you have FQDN different than FQDN of your application running on VM. And the question is how are you going to authenticate it because certificate of VM doesn't match uh, FQDN of AWS. So what if you want to run multiple applications on VM? How proxy will uh, for find out traffic belongs to application number one or number two? How we collect metrics around this data? How we provide security around these applications that we want to keep separately? So all these different uh, scenarios, and they come in very, very different shapes. There's no single answer. How would you add VM to your service mesh? It depends how your service mesh is built, how your VMs are hosted, what is the connection between them. But whatever scenario we look, back to my previous comment, VM has to belong to namespace in Kubernetes. It cannot be shared between different namespaces. So question comes, okay, what I need to do uh, to onboard VM? So you have to create three objects. Object number one is workload entry. And if you're not familiar, workload entry provides you description of VM. So IP address of VM, label of VM, and all other stuff. Workload entry is an object that we actually use to bootstrap VM. So data from this object together with certificates, together with a bigger mesh config, gets transferred to VM. VM gets bootstrapped and it connects back uh, to Istio uh, D and gets authorized there. So then a certificate exchange happens and VM becomes part of your service mesh. Uh, you need two more objects here. One is sidecar, so one in the middle. And sidecar basically uh, defines how uh, your application and your sidecar communicate. Right, so what ports are they listening to? What ports are they sending traffic to? How they talk to each other on what loopback addresses? What namespaces uh, can call this uh, instance with workload? What namespaces with workload can reach out? So all these different things are specified in sidecar. And last thing you need to create, you need to create service entry. And service entry uh, tells Kubernetes pods where they can find your VM or workload endpoint. So it basically has pointer, it has a service name, and it has pointer to your workload endpoint. 
Sidecar and service entry can be replaced, uh, changed, and modified at any moment, and all these changes immediately applied, or almost instantly applied, to your Kubernetes infrastructure. With workload entry, a little bit different, as I mentioned at the beginning, all data, it's part of a data set that getting transferred to VM for bootstrapping. So if you change your workload entry, the most common case, you adding additional labels or you changing IP address of your VM, you need to take this file and put it on VM and rebootstrap it. So workload entry changes are really costly compared to other two. So last thing before demo I want to cover, I want to cover uh, how VM and port communicate to each other. And we totally rely here on mesh network configuration. Mesh network configuration uh, specifies networks for your ports and your VMs. And uh, you can have gateway attached to these ports and VMs, or you may have no uh, gateway attached to it. And you can see basically all four combinations here. So if there's no uh, gateway attached to VM or Kubernetes port network, communication going direct. So your uh, workload calls Istio proxy, Istio proxy calls uh, destination Istio proxy, and uh, uh, reaches uh, destination workload. If you have gateway defined for VM, what happens here, Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes workload reach out to a gateway and then gateway reach out to VM. And opposite side, if um, gateway is defined for uh, Kubernetes cluster, VM reaches out gateway and then uh, gateway routes traffic to destination Kubernetes ports. And of course, if we have gateway defined on both ends, we're going to uh, throw two gateways. It's important to understand just for your traffic pattern, traffic troubleshooting. I know in some use cases, uh, we're really, really looking at a decreasing latency. So having extra hopes definitely may be concerned for uh, performance. So I just wanted to mention it so you uh, have a better idea, you understand how it works in a, a bigger picture. So let's move to the demo. So first, uh, just quick coverage what we will do in a demo and how it's set up. So if you worked with Istio before, you know one of the applications that um, heavily used is BookInfo. So BookInfo application is already set up and I already have VM that runs ratings and details on the same VM. We will uh, look at the end how it works for the pre-established VM, but most important thing we want to show you how to onboard new VM. So we already pre-created service entry and sidecar in Kubernetes, so we will not really uh, change or touch them. So what we will do here, we will create a uh, workload entry for new VMs that also I already pre-provisioned, me meaning it's instance created on GCP. Uh, in my case, it can be AWS, it can be anything. And um, I have IP addresses of this VM, and also inside of VM, Docker is installed. Uh, we can, uh, today we can run Istio proxy on VM as a Docker container and as binary. For this specific demo, we use container, but uh, really it's up to your decision as a customer what you prefer, container or binary. Uh, during demo, we will create workload entry, as I mentioned. We use TCTL, Tetrate, Service Bridge, uh, Utility to bootstrap VM. Uh, we will use SSH direct connection to bootstrap it, but you have also option to do offloading. So export your configuration and import it on your VM, transfer it to your VM and upload there. Um, we will show how proxies installed and configured and run. We will confirm that rating application response, ratings application response to your request. And um, also confirm connection back from a VM to product page, or show VM in a, a TSB, Tetrate Service Bridge, a UI interface, and 
have a quick uh, peek on existing VMs that runs already two different services, uh, ratings and details. And uh, let's start uh, demo. So here you have you see a USB uh, TSB interface. So right now we have uh, booking for application with all services running. Here is ratings that runs as a Kubernetes uh, service, and that's V1. So what we're going to do, we're going to add another service that is going to be V2. But first, let's look what we have already in this cluster. So we have workload entry, and we have two sidecars. One is the default sidecar, and one created for VMs. So also I pre-created workload entry. Uh, you can see multiple labels here, and also IP address that we're confirming on our right window. IP address of VM, external address, and also internal. So we need internal address so VM uses it because it's not aware of its uh, internet address. And also we specify external address twice because we're going to use it for uh, bootstrapping too. And now we're running command to, uh, sorry, uh, let's apply this workload entry. So it's successfully applied. Uh, next thing we will do is to confirm it. It's applied, yeah, seven seconds since it's created. And as a record, as I said, we have already, it's for VMs that are already running and running details and rating. Similar enough, it's called details. These two services running on it. So uh, connecting to VM, you can see that if we run Docker command, there is no containers currently running. Switch back to Kubernetes cluster, and um, basically run a command to bootstrap VM. So it takes a workload entry and it transfers all files to VM and it starts proxy. And you can see now we have proxy running here uh, for five seconds. And it's successful. You can see in the log files, it's successful, successfully uh, connected back to Kubernetes cluster and running already in a ready mode. Let's start ratings. Rating started. Okay. So we have now proxy in ratings containers running on VM. And if we look, there's a number of requests coming from my traffic generator. Uh, let's confirm that it's not pre-recorded. Okay, so there's new request coming from a uh, traffic generator. We get 200 uh, successful response. Uh, if you look at uh, logs for ratings, we also can see ratings. Uh, uh, container receives multiple multiple requests and uh, responds to them. So because right now TLS is not enabled, I should be able to. Uh, query proxy directly from my machine instead of uh, Kubernetes port. Yeah, and you can see I'm getting successful response here. Okay. So now let's try to call back. So what we will do, we will just call from a VM back to product page, and product page is a Kubernetes container, uh, sorry, Kubernetes pod, and we got successful response here. So last thing we want to show is a different VM that already runs two services, details and reviews, I believe. So it's called ratings, but I think it's details and reviews. We will see in a second. So we connected to this VM, and let's see. Yeah, so I have, oh, it's another uh, version of ratings actually I'm running here. So I have Vistio proxy in two application containers listening on different ports. And now when I look here, I can see I have a VM added to my map, 
and I have version 2. Version 2 is VM that I added, and that's successfully shown with um, Dagon. So we can see the traffic is going there and getting responses, and we can get all additional metrics. That's all I wanted to share today. Thank you very much for um, your attention. So I would like to thank um, Service Mesh Project for uh, platform creating platform for, for us to make difference in this uh, space. Service Mesh Con definitely uh, for accepting this proposal and letting us uh, to meet you you for your attention and hopefully you will be able to bring something back home and discuss and of course our customers the trade customers for the great feedback that allowed us to make this product uh, this functionality better understand different use cases different scenarios life scenarios that hopefully a lot of you can apply uh, to trade team for Tremendous efforts uh, getting uh, all of it implemented and available for our customers. And finally, I just want to uh, say uh, thank you to whole big Tetra team for focus and concentration. Hopefully you've got five things that you need to uh, find out in your environment before you're implementing VMs, and we will be more than happy to talk to you of different use cases you have as enterprise, and maybe something that we didn't cover so far, and multiple customers or you personally would benefit from. Thank you.